This is a tutorial uh, slide deck that I created using Ideal Automate Explorer uh, snipping automation tool. Uh, so uh, in this tutorial, uh, the tutorial is called uh, Getting Started with uh, Python Development Using Visual Studio. And they say in this tutorial series, they're going to uh, walk you through how to get started with Visual Studio for Python development. And then there's a Visual Studio offers many powerful features for Python projects, such as rich code editor uh, for Python, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It also a breakpoint interactive debugger and source code integration such as Git and much more. We'll walk you through these scenarios and we look forward to your feedback. This tutorial is setting up Visual Studio for Python. Second one is start coding in Python using Visual Studio. Third is editing Python code using Visual Studio. And the fourth one is debugging. The fifth one is interactive Python. Six is building a website. Seven is cross-platform remote. Eight is source control. The uh, ninth one is creating native modules. Tenth one is create a Python Django website. And the eleventh is interpreters. Okay, setting up Visual Studio for Python. This is the first tutorial. It's about three minutes long. So you can download the Python tools from Visual Studio uh, uh, website at this address here and just click on this link, Python tools for Visual Studio. It's called PTVS. So you download the latest version of Python after you install those uh, uh, Visual Studio tools, PTVS. Another way uh, to install Python is through a website called Anaconda, and they install Python as a bundle. Another way to install Python as a bundle is through InThought. You just have to choose one of those three ways. So once you install uh, uh, Python uh, tools for Visual Studio, you, you can go to View, Other Windows, Python Environments to check to see that it's working. Uh, uh, Python Environments uh, shows several things. And we'll, uh, there's a, a clip here that is going to uh, talk about what those things are from the uh, actual video. Okay. Sorry about the audio quality of that, but uh, so the environments are, uh, they're your interpreter and your packages that are installed for Python. So uh, this is the next tutorial, another three minute uh, video on Connect Learning. And uh, this is called Start Coding Using Visual Studio. So Python uh, normally uses a file system to manage its files, but Visual Studio uses uh, projects. And this has three advantages. First, uh, projects identify the critical files. 
Second, projects can embed uh, build information. Some files may need to be rebuilt every time you change them and so forth. And third, projects can be used to componentize uh, uh, your files. That is, uh, when some files are in a different language. And we'll see that in a later uh, tutorial where we uh, use C++ and Python together. Uh, templates, uh, Visual, and Studio, Visual Studio includes for uh, Python applications. Here they are. If you install the samples, you'll get a lot more. Uh, from existing code, uh, from existing code, this one is used when you already have an existing Python script. Now, uh, uh, Python application, this one, uh, gets you started from scratch. There are a lot of templates to explore. Uh, we're going to use the Python application one. Now, the Python application to get started, uh, you just click on uh, Add New Item to the empty application. And then uh, the third uh, tutorial is called Editing Python Code Using Visual Studio. And this is another three minute video. video you get IntelliSense uh, for importing libraries uh, when you're using Visual Studio, so this is nice. This is an example there. And if you type a function, uh, it'll in, uh, do the import for you. And uh, let's add a function. So we do in, uh, control K, uh, control X to insert snippet. Or you can use an IntelliSense, edit IntelliSense, insert snippet this way. And you uh, select Python definition to insert the snippet for the uh, def definition function. Here's some example code. This is the definition function that he inserted. And then when you ran that sample code, it printed out uh, zeros that would move back and forth. Just to show that you can run Python. Visual Studio debugging is pretty much the same as uh, debugging in C Sharp, so I'm not going to go into it here. Interactive debugging. Okay, uh, so in, a, in the environments window, you can click on uh, the open interactive window. And then what this is going to do. It's going to let you run code uh, on the fly uh, as you type it in. You can test your code in the interactive window. And you can highlight code in your project and uh, right click and say send to the interactive and see how it runs. Now, uh, six tutorial is another three minute tutorial uh, about building a website. Uh, so we start out with a new project template uh, and we select Bottle Web Project and click OK. And we're going to use Azure, so we need to install it to a virtual environment. And so we add our virtual, this is the name of the environment. This is the environment that it, uh, interpreter it's using. And we click Create. And then we just hit F5 to run uh, the website. And it brings up the bottle website, the default website. Now, if you don't have Azure subscription, you can try Azure one hour at a time at tryazurewebsites.net. Uh, so we already have a site created, so we're going to use an empty site. Select empty site on the Azure website. And then we download and publish, uh, a download publish profile 
to use in Visual Studio. So we're going to download a published profile, then use that in Visual Studio. You could use these others uh, for Git and so forth, but we're uh, going to use the publish uh, profile technique. So we download the published profile. And then in Visual Studio, we right-click the project and select Publish. We import our published settings. If you had an Azure uh, subscription, you would click uh, Microsoft Azure Websites, but we don't. So we're importing our, our settings. And we click Publish. And this uh, connects our website to the Azure, you can't see it, it's highlighted in yellow under here, but uh, th this is on the uh, cloud. So, uh, tutorial seven is uh, cross-platform remote <laughs> debugging. And um, we'll enable uh, remote debugging in this session. We'll configure uh, the remote machine and we'll debug Python running on Linux. Okay, so you have to install uh, uh, PTVSD, uh, and this is how you do it. You use pip to install Python packages, and you click on that to install PTSVD for debugging. And then you, uh, open, to open an inkling, in Linux, you use putty, and open uh, the file in uh, Vim. So we'll just uh, uh, paste in uh, the code into Vim and uh, install PTSVD on uh, on Linux. And then we're going to run the Python uh, uh, 3 demo on Linux. And then this is a guessing uh, script where you guess whether the number is higher or lower than 10 or 20, I think. And uh, so it shows that it runs on Linux. And then you attach uh, with uh, Windows Debugger. Click on Attach. And this allows you to use uh, uh, Debug Interactive here uh, to debug your code uh, when you're uh, running cross-platform. You can set values, and there's some resources, uh, PT, Python tools visuals for Visual Studio. Source control. We're going to look uh, using Git and TFS. Who Valis is the presenter and this is a nine minute video version control system. So we use Git repository from GitHub and we'll look at using TFS for Visual Studio. So the Git repository uh, for Azure uh, SDK. We're going to go to this. And this repository gives us access to Azure services such as a blob storage, which we're using this as an example uh, to see how we uh, can use Git to uh, make a, a branch of this website. So um, and you click on projects. And then you uh, clone and uh, paste uh, the URL. I think I skipped a slide, I'm sorry. Nope. You click uh, projects, then you uh, get the, this URL and paste it in there. And then you double click on the repository and you'll see a list of available solutions. Here's one of the available solutions. You click on that. 
and then he likes to make a branch before making changes so uh, click branches click on new branch in our blob test because we're going to uh, uh, do a test uh, and we're copying from origin manager master and we're creating a branch so we can modify the code. And this test shows how to add an image uh, to uh, Azure, Azure Storage Blob. So uh, we're going to test uh, adding an image, uh, loading an image up to the cloud, and then retrieving it. So we add a new uh, item, and it's going to be unit test, and we call it test uh, blob pi. Click on Add. We initialize the blob container is the first step in the code. Just walking you through the code, the comments of the code. We're going to upload the file uh, to a blob. And then we're going to, after we uh, upload it to the cloud, then we're going to uh, get the contents of the blob via a public URL to see if the original image matches the one that we got back from the cloud. So we do an assert to a test that it matches the content. OK, we can add an image to the project by dra dragging uh, a picture uh, from our Explorer window over into the, our project. This is the image we're going to load up to the cloud. Then we uh, run the test in Explorer, test upload. And we can commit our changes by clicking on the commit button. You add a comment. And then you uh, click on sync to push your uh, changes to the GitHub repository. Now we're going to look at it in TFS. Open uh, uh, in Visual Studio. This is the web, uh, 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 you're on the website and you click on open in Visual Studio on uh, this uh, repository. And it says uh, configure workspace, uh, where, where to map the files locally. Click on that. And you click on this button map and get. And is say use uh, source control explorer to view the contents of the repository and so th then you have two options you can click on the solution over here or you can click on the solution over there but either way you want to click on a solution to open the files in explorer and you want to add right click on the python environments and click on add python 3.4 to the project uh, now, when we do that, it's going to cause us, we're going to activate uh, 3.4. Sorry, I'll go back. Act, uh, you right click on the um, 3.4 Python and click on activate. That activates, uh, it, we're, it was originally written in 2.7, now we're in 3.4. So this causes a bunch of errors with the print command. So. Uh, he changes, he cut and paste uh, code in there to fix those errors by putting parentheses around all the print commands. Changes the raw input to what it's called in 3.4. That gets rid of all his errors. And then he shows that you can com uh, commit your changes. You just check in in uh, TFS. And then we can uh, ver go to the web, uh, Visual Studio website, uh, uh, TFS repository, and uh, verify that uh, these changes are, were checked in for 3.4. And here are some re resources, PT, Python tools for Visual Studio, Visual Studio, and Visual Studio Online. Tutorial 9 is creating native modules. This is adding a C++ module to Python. And it took nine minutes for Steve Dower to cover this. 
So we're going to talk about native Python modules, and uh, we're going to create an extension module in C++ to run a tan function, tan h function, that will run five times faster than it does in Python. We're going to build it and use it, and we're going to dug, uh, debug the Python and C code mixture. So the first thing we do, we add a new project. Uh, and we select C++, and we select uh, super fast code is the name of our project. And uh, this is based on ex existing, uh, we add an existing file. And then uh, we update the properties to get rid of errors. So he just cut and paste a file in there to uh, do this tan function real fast. And then he's saying, change these uh, uh, properties to get rid of all your errors and configuration properties here. So you're going to add an include directory too. You're going to add a preprocessor definition. You're going to add a runtime library. Add a linker. And after all that, You've got a uh, clean code that'll run for your tan, super fast tan function. So you build the project and return to PyCon, a Python code on here and add a reference to your C sharp C uh, module that you just created. Then you uh, import your uh, fast function and then you run a test to see which one's fastest. Do a benchmark. We see that it was two point, taking 2.5 when you ran in Python, but it uh, ran in half a second when it ran in C++, so it's five times faster. Pretty cool. So to debug native code, you have to check enable native code debugging. This is under uh, the debug option, I think. Uh, And then uh, you have to click uh, download symbols for my interpreter to get the symbols. And then you open, you're going to open them in this uh, settings dialog. So after downloading, you open the settings and you click on 3.4 uh, symbols and click OK. And you go uh, to go in the debugger when. Uh, so that would step you through uh, with setting those settings. You can walk through your code one uh, statement at a time, but he wants to stop at the exception exactly. So here's how you do that. You click on debug exceptions. You click on Python exceptions. Then you click on built-ins and you look for the type of exception you want to stop at. And this is the type error that we we're getting. So he uh, selected that. And then when he runs his code, it shows him exactly where the error is and uh, it breaks right there for you. So here we are again with the resources of Visual Studio and PTVS. Tutorial 10 out of 11 is create a Django website using uh, Visual Studio. This uh, is a uh, shows website development using uh, Python. And you create a, a Django website. We're going to start out just using the Django database, and then we're going to configure MySQL on Azure, and then we're going to deploy it to Azure websites. And this takes about nine minutes when you're watching the video. So the first step is to uh, if you have the samples downloaded, you'll see uh, polls. The Django uh, web project allows you to take polls for uh, what's your favorite season and so forth. This is an example of it. So we're going to install it into a virtual environment. And here's the environment name, and here's the uh, interpreter we'll be using. Click on create, and we uh, create, uh, say, 
sync the database. Right click on the project, select Python, select sync to Django database. And then uh, we use a console. When it's syncing, you have to enter, answer a few questions like enter a dumb password and so forth. And you run the application by clicking on Internet Explorer. And this is what the uh, uh, Django website will look like in Internet Explorer using the Django's database. Now, we want to create a, a MySQL database in Azure. So to do that, we sign in to uh, alive.com. Uh, Login live.com. So for sure, I think that went twice. You click the new button in the bottom left corner when you get there. And you click uh, Marketplace. And you scroll down to the clear uh, DB MySQL database. And you select, click Next and select Free. You enter the name for the, uh, the uh, database, click Next, and you confirm your free purchase. So once the database is created, click the connection info down here, highlight it, click this to get your connection string. We're going to use that when we uh, deploy to the cloud. When we switch back to uh, Python tools for Visual Studio, where we can install MySQL client. So we click on, uh, right click on Python 3.4, install Python package. We say MySQL client here and click OK. And it uses pip tools to install a MySQL that it shows you in the console output window. Then you go to the settings file to configure the settings that we got for the connection string to use for MySQL. And he just cut and paste and put them in these uh, fields, uh, broke down the connection string. He put it as a comment to start out with and then put them in there. And then uh, he took, uh, he uh, Sync the Django database now again because now we're using this uh, uh, MySQL database in the cloud. And then uh, runs again in the console, uh, but this time it's running against the MySQL in the cloud, and so you have to enter those password, uh, the, uh, dumb passwords and stuff. Answer a few questions, and then you hit F5 to, uh, to run the app again. Still not running in your own local database, but now you are using, I mean, you're running the local host, but you are using the database from the cloud. Now we want to publish the website to the cloud. So to publish, you right click on the project, click publish. This time you click uh, Microsoft Azure websites because we're going to publish to the cloud instead of uh, just trying it for an hour. Uh, we say it's a new website. We get the site a name, we select a region, and we say create. I'm going to go back, and this will be the name of the website, Azure Websites.net, with your name, whatever you put there. And then you click uh, publish. And now it's uh, actually running in the cloud. If you could read that, it would say your website, azurewebsites.net. So that shows that you're both running. Uh, your website is in the cloud, and the database itself is also in the cloud. So we hear the resources. And here's the final tutorial, interpreters. So with these interpreters, uh, the, uh, you, you can switch between interpreters, you can install or remove packages, 
and you can are uh, going to learn how to create and use virtual environments. Uh, a virtual uh, there's a global active global environment. Uh, let's see. So you click on View, Other Windows, uh, Python Environments, and you see that we have uh, four environments installed. An environment consists of the interpreter plus all the your installed packages. That's all it is. So uh, if it has an exclamation mark, that means that the completion database is, for IntelliSense has not been populated. So we need to select IntelliSense in this drop down and click on Refresh Database. And this allows you to have IntelliSense for that language. Now, the active global environment is the one that is uh, in bold, highlighted in bold, in the list. That's the one that's going to be used. And to demonstrate that we can easily change environments, we're going to use this little console application to print the version. And um, this just shows that the uh, completion database uh, is what gives you intelligence, and it, it sees that, that we have we're using 3.4 because this is a, a verb that's not in. I mean, a library that's not in uh, 2.7. Um, so we can add and remove environments uh, by right-clicking on the environments and selecting Add and Remove Environments. So we're going to add 2.7 and, and uh, 3.4. You can have multiple environments and click OK. That, uh, one that's in bold is the one that will be used. So you use the context menu, you right click on the uh, thing and uh, you can, uh, on the environment you want and say activate environment. And that's how you make it bold. That turns it to bold. And you can install packages. Uh, here's what's installed uh, automatically for this. Is uh, If you set it to pip and leave it blank, it shows you everything that's installed. Setup uh, tools is uh, dependent. See, for, uh, is used by pip, so it has to be installed as well. You can update by clicking the up arrow there. It's a, not the latest version. So that's what got installed. Now we want to inst install Azure. So we type in Azure and click on uh, Install Azure. And this installs Azure. And then you can clear the search box to see all the dependencies uh, that got installed when we installed Azure. Shows you everything. Now, virtual environment. All the packages that are installed are available to uh, the global active environment to that whole thing. But you can isolate packages by using virtual environments. If you don't isolate them, uh, all your packages are going to be uh, available across that whole environment. So you can add a virtual environment, right click on your environment and add a virtual environment. And since uh, Iron Python does not uh, support virtual environments. We're going to select 3.4 and click Create. And then we activate the virtual environment just like we did. We right click on the environment and say Activate that 3.4. Now we have a 3.4 virtual environment. We're going to install Azure into this virtual environment, and you'll see that it it did not install into the base 3.4 environment. So you've got two separate environments here. One we've installed Azure into and one uh, that does not have that. So that's the advantage of virtual environments. Uh, if you're gonna distribute uh, your package, uh, the problem with virtual is that you have to reinstall all the packages whoever you distribute it to. So you need a requirements text file to give you a list of those packages. So easily, luckily, you can just right click on this and say, generate the requirements text. And then uh, the person will get the requirements uh, text. 
and they can install what's needed. If you update it, you have to re, uh, redo it and replace it. Or, and that's the uh, end of that. Thanks.